You have to let him consume you. When you put water inside a bowl and then you put oil inside the bowl with the water, what happens? Oil comes right to the top. You can stir that thing up as much as you can. You can boil the sucker out of it. It doesn't matter. The oil always comes to the top. I have several things I want to share with you. We'll see which one really takes off. Um, I was encouraging somebody this morning, telling them, you know, sometimes we get disqualified. Maybe we look at maybe our failures or whatever. And we say, man, I'm just disqualified. I really feel inadequate. I feel like I can't really do what God's telling me to do or or something along that lines, right? <clears throat> and a lot of times I think it has to do with shame and guilt. Um, maybe you don't feel like you measure up. I mean, you know Jesus loves you and forgives you, but just something about it, maybe you just keep on having a snag. Something, you know, like you're trying to get out of somewhere and your coat catches on something, you know, you just feel like you're being held back, you know? Something's just not letting you really perform, really do what you're supposed to be doing, you know? <laughs> you know, I think what happens is, man, um, a lot of times at this point, man, we just kind of feel like if I can't perform well enough, then I'm not qualified. And that's a dangerous spot to be in because really it takes away our faith and it really puts it back onto us and what we're doing instead of instead of yielding. There's usually when somebody feels this way, they're also not yielding. What I mean by that, it's not they're not fully submitted. Okay, I'm not saying that you're not. I'm not saying you don't have a lot of submission. There's just something in your life that you're not submitting. Okay, something in in our life that we're not really yielding to make sense um the reason why i say this is because our who we are what we do how how well we do is not really dependent on if you're able to do it it's not dependent on if you're able to stop doing this little thing that you're ashamed of or stop messing up on this one thing or whatever it is you know i can't seem to be like everybody else a lot of times it comes down to comparing ourselves to others really dangerous <clears throat> so that guy over there he's really anointed you know i would never be like that guy or that guy. you know we just start comparing ourselves to people let's find that scripture real quick Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Let's go over there. <clears throat> Colossians 1, 27. Let's go down to verse 24. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake and in my flesh. I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body. That is the Lord, the church of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known. The mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay? Um, he, he we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may that we may present everyone mature in Christ for this I toil struggling with all of his energy that he powerfully works within me. There's another trend, another verse that says, let me, let me find this one here. <laughs> Might be the same, same chapter. There we go. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18.
Yeah, there we go. Okay. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold. Let's go. So what happens is this right here, we're, we're not being very bold, right? So we're now we're in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Well, I'm saying this can make us feel not very bold, right? Uh, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. Not, Mo not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. But their minds were hardened, for to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, that same veil reveals, remains unlifted, because only through Christ it is taken away. Yet, Yes, to this day, whenever Moses read, a veil lies over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled faces, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. For we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of God, are being transformed into the image. Into the same image. What image? The image of Christ. Okay? We're being transformed into his image from glory to glory. What that means is right now you have a certain measure of glory in your life, right? You have a certain measure of goodness in your life. You display a certain amount of God's goodness right now. But every day, as we yield to him, we become more like him. So right here, when we start doing this, we, be, we feel inadequate. We feel shame and guilt measure up. Something keeps snagging us. What we're doing is we're comparing ourselves to people when we really should just be comparing ourselves to Jesus. And even that, that can be really disheartening because he's even better than everybody else. If we ain't raising the dead yet, man, we ain't like Jesus, right? So my point is this, transformed into his image. But the Bible says this is something that's happening to you. This is not something that you are doing. <laughs> this is something that's happening to you. This is something that God's working in you. But this only happens one way. Through faith. Which I also believe is a sister of humbleness or yielding. When we yield to God, okay? So what you're doing in this situation is you're not trying to become righteous. You're not trying to become good. We're not trying to quit all this stuff. We're not trying to do all this stuff. What I've discovered is <clears throat> if we want to be like Jesus, we need to spend time with Jesus, okay? We yield, we develop relationship with him. We develop intimacy with him. You don't have to try any hard. You don't have to try very hard when you're just hanging out with him all the time. If if you're trying to be good, you'll always fall short. Always. But if I just let him consume me, there's a difference. This is what we're talking about. We're letting him consume us. You have to let him consume you. When you put water inside a bowl and then you put oil inside the bowl with the water, what happens? Oil comes right to the top. You can stir that thing up as much as you can. You can boil the sucker out of it. You can put all kinds. It doesn't matter. The oil always comes to the top. Every time. You can't help it. It's na It's natural. It's its nature. Okay. By nature. Because it's oil. It comes to the top. If we're being made, it's a transformation. So why don't we just come right to the top right away? Because it's a transformation. It's a transformation. You're being transformed into this oil. That just comes to the top without even trying. The point is, we try too hard, you know, sometimes. If we would just yield to him and let him transform us, let him make us into who he wants us to be, we'll be like this oil where we can't stop it. We can't, 
no matter what stirs up in our life, we'll always float to the top. We'll always act like Jesus. I just don't see, you're not spending time with Jesus. If you're not yielded to him and you're not letting him consume you, of course you're not going to act like him because it's a transformation process. The more I'm with him, the more I become like him. We're not trying to be, the only thing you have to do is spend time with him in his word and allow it to wash over you and it will transform you. You don't have to try. You don't have to try to do all this stuff. He's the one who qualifies you. I mean, when we say, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to quit smoking, or I'm trying to do whatever, whatever it is we're, we're upset about, whatever we think is disqualifying us, I'm just trying to, you know, to give more of my tithe. I'm trying, whatever it is that we're hung up with, all right? If we would just spend more time with him, those things would just break off our life. If we are just, think about this, it's a matter of nature, okay? A good tree bears good fruit, and a bad tree bears bad fruit. There's no, they're not trying anymore. It's a matter of faith. I believe that I'm the righteousness of God. I believe that there is nothing that can hold me. I believe that nothing can hold me back. If I believe it, if I believe that, the scripture says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing. Oh, I just can't seem to quit. Da, 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 da. It's a matter of being. Stop trying to do something because you're not going to ever stop. You have to just be like Jesus. When you just realize that it's a matter of nature, that I'm... Watch this. When the scripture says, guard your heart above all things, for out of it comes the issues of, it, of life, right? We're asking God not to change my deeds. We're asking God to change my heart. When God changes my heart, Boom. Things happen. I, I find myself saying, I, you know, I can't do that thing. I can't go do that thing. Because it violates who I am. It's a matter of, of identity at this point. You know, am I identifying with the water or am I identifying with the oil? If you keep on looking at yourself, well, I just can't stop doing it. You're identifying with your sin nature. You're not identifying with your righteous nature. I just can't. Yeah, that's what unbelievers say. You're identifying with your unbelief. You need to identify with your belief. That's why the that's why the that's why the father was like, I, you know, I believe. Help my unbelief. He was struggling with both. Are we identifying with our fallen nature, or are we identifying with Christ? If and we're not just saying, uh, well, uh, listen, a life like that doesn't continue on in sin and hangups. A life like that actually believes they're going to be victorious. I believe I will win. I, it's not like, well, I know God's got me. He'll cover all my sins and I can keep on sinning. That's not how it works. A true transformed life says I can't continue on in my sin. I can't continue on in this inadequacy. Whatever I'm shameful or guilty of. Okay, I can't continue on in it because I'm like him. And when I'm like him, I'm being transformed into his image. And I'm yielding to that thing. And these things just break off my life. They can't hold on. You know? I'm trying to think of something that you try to hold on. Have you ever tried to pick up a bar of soap in the water? That's what it's like when sin tries to get a hold of you. And you're being transformed into the image of Christ. Like a greased pig. <laughs> For real, man. When we become like him, and we are yielding to him, those things can't grab a hold of us. Man. So good. They can't grab a hold of us. Because we keep yielding to him. We keep yielding to him. You know, people... Talk about pornography. Well, my wife just isn't, you know, fulfilling her conjugal rights. So I'm going to run into pornography. You know, the Bible says that, you know, in the same passage, it says, uh, do not deny your spouse their conjugal rights, lest they be tempted, right? So he says, only withhold from each other, you know, do not withhold it from each other unless you're in your time of prayer and fasting. But then when you're done praying and fasting, come together quickly so that you won't be tempted. 
right? So I've heard people, you know, say, yeah, you know, if you're, you're, uh, they'll say, well, they're not giving me, you know, my conjugal rights. So, you know, that's why I went and cheated on her. That Bible verse is not a Bible verse that tells you it's okay to go cheat on your wife when she doesn't give you what you're looking for. It's not what that Bible verse is teaching us. That Bible verse is telling you to be considerate of one another so that you won't be tempted. It didn't say, don't give your conjugal right if you, you know, come back together again so you won't sin. It doesn't say that. It says so you won't be tempted. You can be tempted and not sin. And there's a, I think there's a big misconception here where we think, well, if you get tempted, you have to sin. You don't have to sin. Obviously, he was even talking about in that passage, unless you're fasting, right? But when you're done fasting, come together quickly so you won't be tempted, right? So you, you, know, you know what the answer is? You should fast and pray. Because obviously, he says the only time not to do that is when you're fasting and praying. So if your spouse, if you find that your spouse is withholding conjugal rights from you, you should fast and pray. <laughs> Because that's the only time you should be away from each other is when you're fasting and praying. So if for whatever reason something's not happening, well, maybe you should fast and pray. Probably you should fast and pray for your marriage. Because there's probably a reason why you're not having conjugal rights happening. You need to be fasting and praying. Well, why, why are you always out there praying? You're not coming and spending time with me. Well, I'm not getting my conjugal rights, so I'm having to fast and pray. So I won't be tempted. Good word. You're just not coming in. I'm fasting and praying, woman. I need me some Jesus because you're not my salvation. Your wife is not your deliverance from sin. Jesus is your deliverance from sin. So you say, I'm being, fa I'm being tempted. You better run to Jesus. Don't run to your wife. Or your husband, vice versa. Or you don't be running down to the girl down the road either. That's... Fasting and praying. Why are we fasting and praying? We kill our flesh when we fast. When we pray, we fill up our spirit man. The only way you can overcome sin is by being with Jesus. That's it. You have to be having an intimate time with him. You need a word from God. It's powerful stuff here. Fasting and praying. Being transformed into that image. It's not something you're trying to do. It's something that you are. It's something that it's already, you have to live from this reality. You're not trying to become the resurrected person. You already are the resurrected person. You need to live from that. I am the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We are the righteousness of God. We therefore no longer look at ourselves according to the flesh. We look no man according to the flesh. The, the, the old has passed away. The new has come. He who knew no sin became sin so that I might become the righteousness of God. We're not having to try anymore. We got to stop trying. We used to have a joke around here. People come to the barracks, you know what we tell them? Just stop doing math. Just stop. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work. <laughs> Just stop. Just stop. <laughs> it doesn't work. You can't just stop. You need a transformation. You need to be yielding your life to Jesus. And those things will just roll right off you. You know, the people, the hardest part, listen, the hardest part is not stopping sin. The hardest part is getting quiet. The hardest part is being silent and hearing the voice of God. That's the hardest part. You know why? Because you have to let go. You have to let go. People are like, well, how does... <coughs> let go of, of control. You know, anybody can stop for a while. Anybody can do good for a while. But can you let go? That's what this is all about. Faith is letting go. You're not trying to control. You're not trying to make anything happen. You're releasing <laughs> the kingdom of God into your life. And you're letting go of the kingdom of darkness. You're letting go.
That's why we have to fill, be filled up with the word so much. <clears throat> so, on that note, we're going to talk about be, the importance of hearing, of hearing the word of God. <clears throat> we have to hear the word of God. So, it's important. It's so important to hear God's word. Hear his voice. Everybody needs a word from God. Everybody thinks, well, the only people who can hear a word from God are, are preachers. People think that. You know, they might not say it, but they think that. They feel that way. They think, well, maybe just a preacher is supposed to hear the word from God. Everybody who is a sheep, Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. So everybody's supposed to be hearing from God. you got to get a word from the Lord. <clears throat> Why? This is what you stand on. God says, watch this. The scripture says in Hebrews, let's look at this scripture up so that you'll know where it is. Okay, Hebrews 11, verse 6. <clears throat> now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Everybody say, I, I am I, sure. I am sure. Have you ever... ever it, <clears throat> How many times you know? Think about this. We're not talking about necessarily you guys individually here, but anybody in the in the in the in the, in the body of Christ. <laughs> How many times we read the scripture and we're like, "Man, I'm not sure." I mean, that's our thought process. I'm not sure. Are you sure? Are you sure? I'll tell people. I'll tell people. The Bible teaches us that it's always God's will to heal, and I already know with their hearts. Are you sure? Well, the Bible says you have to have faith of a mustard seed. And if you have faith of a mustard seed, you can speak to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will obey you. And nothing will be impossible for you. So when I tell people, if faith is the assurance, meaning you can say, I'm sure. I'm not, not are you sure, but I am sure. So if I tell people it's always God's will to heal, and their, immediately, their immediate thought is, are you sure? I'm not sure. Well, then you don't have faith. That's called doubt. Okay? People don't understand how much doubt plagues us. Is it a real mountain? Is it a figurative mountain? <laughs> I mean, anything that assaults your faith, what is faith? I am sure. You want to know what faith is? I am sure. I'm sure. I'm convinced. I am fully persuaded. Come on. You know... If you have faith, chances are you did have doubt. Fully persuaded. You know what that means? You went from one side of the fence to the other side of the fence. You were persuaded. You had one thought process, now you've changed your thought process. You've been converted. It's a conversion. Convicted. I didn't know for sure, but now I'm convinced. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Faith is not wishful thinking. Hope is not wishful thinking. Hope is pretty much the same thing as faith. Hope is the anchor inside the cliff of the rock when you're rock climbing. That's hope. Faith is the line holding onto that anchor. Hope comes before faith. And if your hope is as best as a wish... Your faith is faithless. It's going to break. It will not hold. Mm. If your hope is as good as wishful thinking, your faith is faulty. You're in big trouble, sir. You will fall to your death. You need to know for a fact that anchor is going to hold. 
Then you put your rope through it. That's what hope is. You know, a lot of times you're not the one who went up there first. Somebody else climbed up there and stuck that little anchor in there first. You're hoping you're going to put your carabiner on that anchor. It's going to hold you. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> you didn't even put it in the wall, but you're trusting it. What are you hoping in? That's what's important. Well, I'm hoping in a God that sometimes answers my prayers. Then you're not hoping in God. If you say to yourself, I'm hoping in a God and sometimes answers my prayers, you're not hoping in God. God always answers our prayers. Every time. Well, well, I don't know. I, if in that moment when you're praying and you think he might not answer your prayer, you didn't pray to God. Because if you were praying to God, he would always answer your prayer. How do I know that? Because Jesus said it a, bit, a bunch of times. Ask anything in my name, it will be given to you. Oh, you know, that just, I just don't know. That just doesn't seem to be what people, Jesus didn't really. You're not sure, are you? Jesus, you know, he didn't really mean anything. Huh? Dying. Dying. <laughs> well, I'm not sure if that's what means. I know, I know, it's called faith. <laughs> Jesus people are going to probably stone me one day when they start actually listening to my teachings let's find these scriptures man well, we, ha we have to stop watering Jesus down we need to stop interpreting Jesus through the book of James and start interpreting the book of James through Jesus book of James says, you know, ask, you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. I believe that, but you need to ask, you need to be reading in the light of Jesus. Because Jesus says, ask anything in my name, it will be given to you. Anything in my name. Well, Lamborghini is probably not in God's name. Praying for the sick is in Jesus' name. Uh, praying on behalf of Jesus. What does that mean? The mission that Jesus is sending you. When you say, I'm praying in the name of Jesus, that means that Jesus sent me. Jesus didn't send you down to the Lamborghini shop. He sent you to set the captives free. He didn't send you down to the let's serve me shop. He sent you to set captives free. And people say, well, God just didn't answer my prayer. Are you sure you were praying to God? Did you make something up in your brain about who God is? We need to read the Bible. You have to understand God's character. He's not a liar. If he says he'll do something, he'll do it. It might look like you're about to die before it happens, but that doesn't change the word. Is my hand shortened, the Lord says. Is my hand shortened? Have you been trying to reach for something and you just couldn't get it? Your hand is short. God's not. He'll be able to get it. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I hope this teaching blessed you and, and inspired you and helped you out a little bit. Man, if, th if it was a blessing for you, please uh, share the video, like it, leave a comment if you have questions. I'll be, I'll try to answer these questions and whatnot. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Go to our Facebook page and make sure you've already liked the page. Hover your mouse over following and make sure see first is checked. If there's a check mark there, then you know that you'll be seeing our videos in your newsfeed. Also, if you're wanting to support our ministry and help fund missions work and help uh, support drug and alcohol recovery, please go to our website, boldestalignedministries.com or www.balmzs.com and you'll see here there's a donate button. You just hit this donate button right there. It'll give you an opportunity to, to sow into the ministry. 
right there you can see Bold as Line Ministries. You can give 30 bucks a month, $50 a month, or $100 a month, or just a one-time gift if you want. Also, you can go to our website, 3rcandles.com. Remember, all the candles are handmade by our students in recovery, and so you can select from our wide range of products. I mean, we just have tons of candles, you can see right there. And also, be sure to sign up for the VIP offers. We can get 25% off your next purchase. You'll be able to receive offers we have. We're also gonna be doing some free test strips for fragrances as well, so make sure that you sign up right here and, and all that good stuff. So, have a good day.